The world of finance is one that's considered to be largely anonymous, but it shouldn't have been like this. The financial industry has had more than its fair share in terms of scandals and problems, and thanks largely to RPA who were able to provide assistance during times when few others could or would go. We got the opportunity to speak to Mr. Zubair Chaudhary, CMA, RPA, APA, and a certified accounting practitioner. Zubair is a visionary, a thinker, an entrepreneur, and a motivator. He has been involved in many national, international, and professional organizations in Canada. In 2019, he was elected as the president of the Society of Professional Accountants of Canada when he pledged that he is going to reform and improve the RPA designation, one of the oldest accountant designations in Canada that will give the choice and hope to the future accountants in Canada and around the world to succeed and shine as the most respected profession in the world. In this podcast, he highlights the RPA designation to future accountants who are ready to assist the business leaders in making an important business decision with a cognitive approach and who are trained in applying new technologies using data analytics that will accelerate the business growth and profitability in the post-COVID-19 economic recovery. To learn more about the Society of Professional Accountants of Canada, please visit rpacanada.org. Hi, Mr. Chaudhary. On behalf of Canadian SME, I'd like to welcome you to our Small Business Podcast. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Mr. Chaudhary, we're very pleased for you to be joining us uh, this afternoon. And today's topic would be completely surrounding the RPA, Registered Professional Accountants. Now, Mr. Chaudhary, the world of finance is one that's often considered to be largely anonymous, but it shouldn't have been like this, you know? The financial industry has had more than its fair share in terms of scandals and problems, and thanks largely due to RPA, who were able to provide assistance during times when few others could or would go. Can you share with our audience, what is the Registered Professional Accountants, RPA? Can you tell us, you know, a little a bit about the role of the RPA Canada, oh. what its mandate is? Yeah, sure. Uh, the Registered Professional Accountants, uh, RPA, uh, is a designation uh, offered by the Society of Professional Accountants of Canada. The Society is uh, now the oldest accounting body in Canada, was established in 1978. Since then, the society is issuing the RPA designation to qualified accountants who meet the entrance to the membership requirement of the society. For the RPA designation, students don't need to have a university degree. Society provides accounting knowledge through its comprehensive and relevant prerequisite courses offered by the community colleges and the universities, for example, Sheridan College and McMaster University. And RPA can do any job in accounting, accept audit and review engagement. Society makes sure that RPA members have minimum of two years of relevant practical experience. Society has members across Canada and internationally with the required skill set and up-to-date knowledge of the accounting profession. RPA education and training is focused on small and medium-sized businesses with lifelong learning. It is the main objective of the society to protect the public interest by having its member well-trained to provide the accounting and relevant experience. Now, Mr. Zubair, what are the requirements to become an RPA? Like, what is the process like? How long does it take you to become an RPA? What is it? Well, uh, there are many pathways to become RPA in Canada. And uh, I will not uh, talk about all of them today, but there's a very long, lengthy list. Because society believe that uh, we must adhere to uh, the policy of uh, inclusiveness and diversity. So that's where we open the door for those who are interested to become a RPA and accountant. So they have a choice that they can become an RPA. So I will talk today uh, mostly on uh, three pathways uh, to become an RPA. There are uh, uh, somebody who's a college graduate or a university graduate and all those uh, graduate with the foreign designation of the accounting, uh, they can also become RPA. So I will focus today on these three pathways. Okay, for a college or university graduate, uh, students study the prerequisite courses uh, established by the Society of Professional Congress of Canada through community colleges and the universities. 
and they, they registered there and they they cleared their exams there were 16 prerequisite courses established by the society and once those student complete their prerequisite courses from those universities then they can apply to the society to write the final competency exam we call it a mandatory professional exam mpe so mpe is a four module online securely proctored examination of three hour each on the subjects of uh, financial accounting, management accounting, income tax uh, and data analytics and technology. So student uh, who write these exam must pass all four exam within one sitting. Society also offers a review session on MPE examination for students to concentrate on their study so that they can uh, uh, successfully uh, appear on the MP examination. Okay, so these are the two, uh, two uh, one, one pathway for the college and university graduate, and the other one is for a foreign designation holder. As you know, Canada is an immigrant country. Many, many people come from uh, uh, different parts of the world to Canada. And if happen to be that new immigrant uh, uh, related to the accounting profession and have a designation from uh, their jurisdiction where they're coming from, so society does recognize those designation and they, they then give them the uh, RPA designation without uh, uh, writing MPE exam and also give them the exemption on their prerequisite courses. But all those uh, foreign uh, designation holder because they are new to Canada, so they must uh, uh, write uh, uh, and study Canadian business law, Canadian income tax, uh, and uh, Canadian ethics for accountants and data analytics uh, to successfully integrate in the Canadian accounting profession. RP also offers the mentorship program to those foreign accountants. Societies, education, and uh, review sessions are conducted by uh, very highly educated, uh, academic, uh, accomplished, and uh, uh, pedagogical uh, expertise and cognitive approach. So they teach those uh, courses uh, to the uh, to the uh, accountants. And uh, idea is to get them uh, integrated quick and fast. And uh, this is called access to the profession. Right. Now that you have explained the entire process, what is the primary benefit of getting an RPA designation? Like what kind of jobs will an RPA be qualified for? Well, uh, basically, RPA designation comes with the respect and rewards uh, like any other designation. So when uh, somebody become a professional accountant and they put uh, RPA designation after their name, they quickly uh, get the respect from the society and the community and also a public can trust their work that they are uh, trained for the job they are uh, delivering. And that is the one thing they do. And presently, uh, all of our members, RPA members are fully employed. So we don't have any RPA member looking for jobs. And our RPA members, uh, once they have a designation, they, are, they can work in industry, they can work in the government institutions, uh, work in non-profit organizations. Uh, and the most of them then also choose a public practice, uh, helping the smaller, medium-sized businesses, uh, providing them the accounting, taxation, and related services. With RPA, members can work in the industry, start their own practice uh, as an accounting professional. However, if the RPA member choose to start an accounting practice, he or she must obtain the certificate of accounting practice from the society. And that follow the stringent guideline, regulation, and code of ethics to qualify to become a practitioner. Right. Now, can you describe the certificate of accounting practice as you just mentioned, and what value does a certificate of accounting practice have for individuals and businesses? Well, uh, like, like any other profession, accounting profession was moving very slowly in the setting the new guideline, adopting the new technologies, changing the work habits to catch up to 21st century. Basically, COVID-19 pandemic played an important role for uh, forcing the accountant and accounting bodies to catch up to the new realities. And uh, for a small business, uh, uh, it used to be that anybody who have uh, little knowledge of accounting, I call them, you know, accounting for dummies, they can even uh, prepare a financial statement for small business and uh, issue a notice to reader. 
and that was the decade old practice uh, which was outdated and uh, was not really following the proper guideline and i uh, uh, thanked and uh, you know applauded the job of the accounting and auditing standard board that they finally caught up to the time and they established the new guideline for the compilation engagement report called CSRS 4200. And then they abolished the notice to reader practice since December 1421. So that triggered that the RPA must now uh, follow the ASB uh, guideline fully to prepare the members uh, to engage in the compilation engagement. So now our members are fully trained and educated uh, and uh, they write the exam, take the courses and become the accounting practitioner. So now our accounting uh, RPA with accounting practice, uh, they can uh, issue the com compilation engagement report and sign that one. So it also give the kind of uh, recognition for the RPA to do the job and serve the businesses and the, and the public at large. And that will end for those non-designation holder, non-experienced uh, accountant uh, who were doing the notice reader. So that practice will be discontinued from now on. So that is why it was very necessary for RPA to have the accounting practice certification. And this certification, uh, once you establish that one, uh, there are a few requirements uh, that member must follow. And uh, the, those requirements are such as the member uh, must be in good standing as an RPA. He must successfully complete the certificate of uh, practice uh, education and training. He must have a practical experience in public accounting and follow the RPA code of ethics for accountants and meet the minimum annual credit hour for continued professional development CPD, have an error and omission insurance, cooperate with the society in the process of complaint, if there's any complaint against that member, and the member must also go through the periodic practice review. So these are the things that uh, once a practitioner follow and adhere to, and it, uh, it give uh, the public the confidence on those RPA accounting practitioners. So that means that they can serve the public better and do the job better. Right. Now, Mr. Chaudhary, the economic recovery due to COVID is still in its very early stages, but it's already having an impact on how accountants work. What role do you see RPAs playing in the post-COVID economic recovery? Like, how do you think RPAs can help businesses get back on their feet? Very interesting. You know, it was not long ago in early 2020s uh, when uh, COVID-19 hit upon us uh, uh, with a deadly pandemic. Uh, I remember the accountants uh, were a big help during the start of the pandemic when accountants helped uh, to deliver the trillions of dollars of uh, government aid, subsidy, and incentives to help uh, small and mid-sized businesses and individuals to, uh, to co-op with the uh, deadly pandemic and uh, it go through that one. And that's why the accountants were called essential worker during the pandemic time. And as you know, the 97% of the Canadian businesses are small to medium sized businesses and also micro businesses. And that is, uh, was, had a, a pandemic had a big impact on the small to medium sized businesses. And many entrepreneurs lost their saving with the loss of their businesses. And, uh, RPAs can and will play an important role now moving forward post-COVID economic recovery. There seems to be two overriding objectives. The first objective is to help viable businesses to survive and prosper that will save the jobs that are needed at these uh, uh, deadly uh, desperate times. There is also a lot of RPA can do since they are trained to serve the small and medium-sized businesses. Most of the trades people and small business entrepreneurs are not very literate on financial accounting and tax matter. They know the best of what they do, but obviously uh, accounting, uh, financial and tax matters is not their domain. And that is where the RPA really come very handy to helping those small businesses uh, uh, to work through the, these uh, 
फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग एंड टैक्स मैटर्स कोविड नाइनटीन है चेंज एवरी रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ द बिजनेस इज द टेक्नोलॉजी एंड ऑनलाइन शॉपिंग इज द न्यू रियालिटी and if the small businesses are not geared towards uh, learning and adopting the new technology online shopping home delivery and uh, online payment process uh, obviously those uh, small business uh, will be left behind and that's where the rpas are fully trained to guide those small businesses and entrepreneurs and take care of their uh, accounting and financial matters and so that they can do the job better they can concentrate on their uh, increasing their revenue productivity and also reducing the cost and expenses so these are the things uh, where uh, where rpa can help as well and uh, another thing is certainly rpa can assist the uh, sme in getting the information using the data analytics the data analytics is the new uh, technology where uh, every business need to know the trend and whatever uh, the the create more profitability whatever the reduce the cost so that analytics uh, report can guide uh, the businesses and identify the key performance indicators uh, so far the those businesses and another thing rpa help to their small businesses about uh, having their liquidity and have getting make sure they have positive cash flow making sure that they they are uh, cutting their cost and uh, using those uh, uh, technologies to to reduce the cost and also to increase the sales so these kind of things uh, rpas are already and willing to help and work and uh, i think uh, rpa will play a bigger role and uh, with the impact of the covid 19 we all must learn unlearn and relearn the new technology new process and new trends so this is basically how rpa will contribute to the post covid economic recovery we are part of it right now thank you mr chaudhary for walking us through the rpa designation and i'm very glad that we had the chance to speak about its role its requirements and how important it is for small businesses to really seek their help especially during this challenging time so thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule and being so insightful i think our audience would be pleased by hearing from you you welcome it's a pleasure Chatting with Mr. Chaudhary was an amazing experience. He is taking the accounting profession to a new level, equipped with the relevant knowledge and the latest technology that will help future professional accountants to advance and accelerate in their chosen profession. To learn more about the Society of Professional Accountants of Canada, please visit their website rpcanada.org. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Please do share the podcast and feel free to check out the other episodes and do not forget to subscribe to the Canadian SME Small Business Magazine to stay up to date on all our upcoming events and get the top business insights from industry leaders. This is Maheen, your host for the Small Business Podcast.